I want to take a minute. I want to take a minute here and um, say a word about a colleague of mine. I uh, I've known for a little while now that Charles Krauthammer has been sick, um, and I've known Charles Krauthammer for many many years in his his work at the Fox News Channel. And I read the statement that he released today, and I will tell you, it is one of the bravest things that I've ever read in my life in terms of what one human being can say uh, about what this life is and how precarious at times life can be for all of us. And I think it's one of the hardest things that anybody would have to do as it relates to, you know, just facing the truth in life, and that is that we we know we're not going to be here forever. And the older we get, I mean, Anthony Bourdain, who, who apparently took his life, um, you just never know. You would think looking on the outside, everybody would think, oh, he has the best life. He gets to travel the world and, and get paid to eat, you know, exotic dishes and, and, you know, meet incredible people. Doesn't mean you're happy. You know, I will tell you, I've met people that have everything that are still unhappy. I know people that are depressed. I know people that are manic depressed. I know people that have mental illness. I know people that have physical ailments. I want to read this to you and then tell you a little bit more about what I know about Charles Krauthammer. And he put out a statement today that I, I just, it blew me away. I have been uncharacteristically silent these past 10 months. Now, I had thought that silence would soon be coming to an end, but I'm afraid I must tell you now that fate has decided on a different course for me. In August of last year, I underwent surgery to remove a cancerous tumor in my abdomen. The operation was thought to have been a success, but it caused a cascade of secondary complications, which I have been fighting in the hospital ever since. It was a long and hard fight with many setbacks, but I was steadily if slowly overcoming each obstacle along the way and gradually making my way back to health. However, the recent tests have revealed that the cancer has returned. There was no sign of it as recently as a month ago, which means it is aggressive and it is spreading rapidly. My doctors tell me their best estimate is that I have only a few weeks left to live. This is the final verdict. My fight is over. He goes on, I wish to thank my doctors and caregivers whose efforts have been magnificent. My dear friends who have given me a lifetime of memories and whose support has sustained me through these difficult months. And all of my partners at the Washington Post, Fox News, Crown Publishing. And lastly, I thank my colleagues, my readers, and my viewers who have made my career possible and given consequence to my life's work. Now, I believe that the pursuit of truth and right ideas through honest debate and rigorous argument is a noble undertaking, and I am grateful to have played a small role in the conversations that helped guide this extraordinary nation's destiny. I leave this life with no regrets. It's been a wonderful life, full and complete, with the great loves and great endeavors that make it worth living. I'm sad to leave, but I leave with the knowledge that I lived the life that I intended. Charles Krauthammer. I want to just tell you a story because that represents everything I've known about him. Charles Krauthammer's life is a profile in courage. I won't give you the whole story. You know what? It might be worth ordering his book because it's pretty phenomenal. And he actually tells this story in the book. And, um, you know, we have a Washington bureau and, and I work out of New York. And uh, as a result, I would never, you know, at different times I'd be down there a lot. Other times I wouldn't be down there much. But uh, I've always watched them on TV. And, you know, I was always busy doing my show and prepping for my other show. So I never really got a chance to watch him every night. But I would have him on frequently as a guest over the years. And at some point, I finally met. And this goes back many years ago. I finally met Charles Crownhammer. I didn't know his life story. I didn't know that he had been in a wheelchair since pretty early on after he had finished medical school. He's a doctor. He's a medical doctor. And I said to him, Charles, I never knew. And it brought the biggest smile to his face. And I said, I'm so sorry. And he's laughing. He literally was laughing at me at my expense, which was great. And it turned out I... I didn't know at the time, but it turned out that he was laughing because he never wanted to be defined by being in a wheelchair. I mean, the level of incapacitation for him was severe. I mean, you know, paralyzed from the chest down. And uh, his ability, the, the amount of courage it took, he would do the shows every single day, 
write his books and columns every single day. Now imagine, life is hard enough. This life is difficult. And now imagine that every single morning, you're you're not going to be a doctor that you worked so hard to be. you got to now transform your dreams in life, your expectations of what you want your life to be. You end up in a wheelchair, and look at the career that this man has built. Look at the impact, intellectual impact, that he has had. Now, we didn't always agree, and I think he always loved it more when we disagreed, actually. And he'd always make a, a powerful case on his side, and, and it was always friendly. So anyway, when, I, when he wrote about this experience of me not knowing, and then he talked about so many other people that wrote him that didn't know as well, and it made him happy. Now, think about the challenges just for a minute. If you have to get up, wake up every single day, as hard as life already is, and have the added burden of being in a wheelchair, and have the added burden of having, you know, everything is therefore that much more difficult. Getting dressed is an ordeal. Getting up is an ordeal. Getting a shower, getting changed is an ordeal. Every day, eating was an ordeal. Writing was an ordeal. Challenges that most of us never face in life. And, I, and frankly, you know, I've, I've learned this in all the years that I've known military people that have, I've seen severe injuries. And, I, and how did they get up every day? And how did they, guys that double amputees, guys that had their arms blown off, guys that have their faces are disfigured, their look you, totally unrecognizable before they were hurt in action trying to defend us. And I look, every time I think I have a problem in life, I think of people like Charles and people in the military that have sustained these incredible injuries. So now he's facing, and I just love how he did it. You know, I, I just think the way he said it, my fight's over. This is the final verdict. He's facing a truth that the doctors told him. And there's always hope for a miracle. But, you know, to say all that he loved everything that he did in this life, and he's happy to have had the opportunity in this life, and I would just say he is and defines everything that is great about people. Their ability to overcome adversity and challenge. Their ability to dig deep with grit and determination and become the best you can be. Um, The fact that he contributed so much in terms of You know, using his intellectual curiosity and his intellectual acumen, he was brilliant, to to the country and the narratives and the debates that we have. And there wasn't a bitter bone in his body. The guy guy loved this life. And um, now he's heading on to the next life. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know there are people that don't have any faith. I just have, I don't know how I would, you know, we always like to think how would we react to these things. But honestly, I, I would hope when this moment comes in my life, and it will come, I would like to know it's coming, like he does, and I'd like to think that I can handle it as gracefully as he can. And it just shows, it defines him who he was. That's the man I knew. So when I interviewed him about that story in the book about the wheelchair, he started laughing. I said, you know, this is so embarrassing to me, and you put this in your book. And he goes, oh, don't be embarrassed. That, to me, was like a gift. And he told me it became a story that he told everybody. And I actually tell my version of it now. And that actually made me happy. That I had turned a moment where I didn't know. Then I got to know about his life and his accident and learned about his experiences. And I just, I had such deep respect for the man that I learned about in the process. Look, I just want to say that Charles Krauthammer, thank you for the for the times we've had together. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Godspeed. You know, incredible life lived. Incredible adversity overcome. He definitely defines having fought the good fight. And well done. I, I as a Christian I just believe that God has prepared for us many mansions in heaven and the hairs of our head are counted. I believe all that. And that There's a paradise that awaits all of us. I look forward to seeing Charles there. So profile and courage that you don't see very often.